London, make some noise! If you're happy to be here, say ah ah. ah. If you're excited, say eh uh -huh. yeah. For those of you who are confused, let Africa have its time. It is our weekend. It is our weekend. We have been waiting a long time for this. It is our weekend. Why do Africans always express themselves like that? You know I'm tired of you now. Hello guys, my name is Eddie Caddy. I'm a proud Congolese. Yeah. I'm from a country called the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's a long country, isn't it? Go there, you'll see how long it is, my dear. I wasn't born here, guys. I just want to get straight to it. Since we're celebrating Africa, some people might be able to relate. But I'm so happy to be here because I look at my journey. I wasn't born here. I was born in Congo. I left at the age of eight. Well, I didn't leave. My parents took me. They didn't explain why. They said, shut up, get on the plane. I got at the age of eight, couldn't speak a word of English, right? Went to school, people were confused. All I knew was fine. Mm. That was my sound. Everything was fine. Mm. But, you know, very quickly, as I started learning a language, I realized, man, that people don't really understand the world. I had friends asking me, right? One of my friends, Billy, that was his name, Billy. Why are you laughing? His name was Billy. What's wrong? <laughs> Billy says, well, Ed, so what? You're African, right? I said, yeah, I'm African. So, well, can you speak African? I said, start again, boomerang. He said, can you speak African? I said, what do you mean, can I speak African? What do you want me to speak? A cocktail of different languages? He said, well, you know, Africa, you know, it's a country. I said, look at your father and your mother. Look at them well. I had to break it down to my friends from very early on. Africa is not a country, it's a continent. And you know, poor Billy, he had to, you know, I was teaching my friend. I wasn't offended. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, listen, there's different parts of Africa. So I don't know, Ed, you all sound the same. I said, that's because you don't have ears. <laughs> Very early on, I had to tell him, listen, people from West Africa sound different to people from Central Africa. So there's some people in West Africa, like for example, I said, in the majority of the people in this country, in the UK, from West Africa, from Nigeria or Ghana, no, I, I didn't ask for you. It's not your independence. It's not your independence day. You know? We are free. We are free. <laughs> Billy said, I don't understand. I said, what, Billy? You can't tell the difference between a Nigerian and a Ghanaian. He said, come on, Bill. Let me take you through the streets of London. <laughs> so he was a witchy man. I said, well, let me break it down. You see, um, Ghanaians, they were the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence. Relax. You wasn't there when it happened. Relax. You can't take, you wasn't there. You had the result of it, but you wasn't there. <laughs> and he said, so what does that mean? I said, well, it means they just were ready to be free. They didn't want no trouble. He said, what? I said, listen, you can tell a Ghanaian from the way they speak. A Ghanaian speaks like he's doing a karaoke. <laughs> a cappella, like he's singing. Ask any Ghanaian for directions. Uh, excuse me, a uh, kweku. How do I get to the Royal Festival Hall? Oh, so uh, you want to go? <laughs> Listen, it's always very windy where Ghanaians are. Always very. So you want to go to the Royal <laughs> Festival Hall. What you do is you go. You continue going. Do you know how long a roundabout is to a Ghanaian? When you get to the Royal... <laughs> It's all right, I'll take the train. Thanks, I'll take the train. The first time I went to Ghana, I got to Kotoka Airport. As soon as I stepped out, I didn't know I had so many A's to my surname. I got out and I said, oh my God, Eddie Cardi. You are so welcome to Accra. And let me tell you something, that was just the men. You should have seen the women. He said to me, I don't understand, so I'm telling you. Ghanaians don't want no trouble. Even if there was World War 17, the world is going mad. Everybody's just shooting up the place. You understand? Because, you know, you, 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 will get, you will get the Americans with their missiles, the Russians, AK-47, Nigerians, they just use words. Nigerians, don't, but you want to play with us. You will see. Okay, more. <laughs> Ghanaians don't want to travel. Ghanaians, water pistols. Pew, 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 what's Chale? Stop. Pew, pew. Oh, Chale, pew, pew. I don't want, oh, you miss me. Chale, oh, you miss me. You miss me. So, Billy 
was like, Ed, this is interesting. Ed, keep talking, Ed, this is interesting. I'm listening. I said, well, he said, what about, what about our Nigerian friends? I said, listen, any Nigerians in the building? <laughs> yeah, I'm not scared of you. We're going to talk about it. I said, Nigerians are what you call extremely passionate. Let me pick my words very carefully here. <laughs> Nigerians are very passionate people, right? Listen, the first time I came across a Nigerian couple, I was in South London, Peckham, coincidentally. <laughs> and guys, this is what I saw from afar. This man and this woman, right? From afar, this was... This is the man to his woman. Walking God. You Nigerians will not win today. <laughs> Round two. Take it. So I saw this guy really going at this woman. So I thought, this is great Britain. Women have rights. So let me go and save this damsel in distress. So I started running, right, to save her, right? When I got close, I realized very quickly this Nigerian man was not being aggressive. He was being romantic. <laughs> you was not there, I was there. It's the words that was coming out of this Nigerian. I learned how passionate Nigerians are. He was looking at his wife and said, I'm telling you, I'm Funke, you are the best woman I could have ever married. Me. <laughs> After 35 years, look how wonderful you still look. My God is good though. <laughs> Anybody come between us, they will never suffice. No new friends, no new friends. Wow. I learned that very quickly, man. Very, very quickly. But you've got to be proud of where you come from. You've got to go around the world teaching people about your culture. When I first came to this country, I started realizing, I said, oh, there's more black people around the world. And my dad was like, yes, Eddie, they are called Jamos. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn very quickly, you, you can call them Caribbeans. You can call them Bayesians, Jamaicans, St. Lucians. Relax. <laughs> you know, love a shout out, innit? Now, very quickly I realized we had a lot of similarities. I used to go to um, certain parties with my Caribbean friends. The first time I went to a party, it was called, uh, it was a revival party. Yeah, well, yeah you guys know. Yeah, my, 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 friend's, my friend's uncle took us there. And I left that party and I went to my dad and said, Dad, I have witnessed witchcraft. <laughs> my dad said, why, son, talk to me? I said, Dad, music was playing. The man was not moving. But somehow the woman was affected. My dad said, I don't understand. I said, Dad, you know, as Africans, we move. We make sure the woman feels it. <laughs> we make sure. We make sure. But I said, what was he doing? I said, Dad, the music was playing. The man was not moving. He closed his eyes. This is what I was hearing. And all I've seen is... <laughs> but how this woman was affected... She started painting the ceiling. Painting. <laughs> Housework straight away. I realized a lot. First time I went to the barbers, I was in trouble. It wasn't my fault. I couldn't really speak English too well. I was trying to get used to the language, let alone different accents. Went in there, and this man said to me, Boy, I don't know I know. I know. <laughs> I said, Jesus, I need you. So I wasn't was trying to be rude, so I said, um, pardon, pardon. I said, when I said, we're not going to hit you all right now, but I was like, zoom, 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 zoom. I said, fine. 
What am I supposed to do? You use what you have. The haircut that I received that day, number one here, number two there. Number four here, and mommy slap here. But you learn, man, you learn as you grow up. I grew up in a very strict African household. My dad looked at me when he said, Eddie, we need to talk. That's what he did. <laughs> That's how I knew it was time. He said, Eddie, we need to talk. I said, what's that? He said, Eddie, do you know when I brought you to London? And by the way, guys, when I, when I pay reference to my family, my parents, I'm going to speak just like them. It makes it a lot easier for you to feel the emotion. Right? A lot of my friends used to be afraid to come to my house. Hey. There's times where my friends would be like, Ed, <sighs> coming to your house is a bit of EastEnders. I say, why does your dad speak so aggressively? What's all this? So I had to go to my dad and say, Dad, my friends are scared of you. My dad said, well, why? He said, because you, you know, he said, you're so forthcoming with your English. I said, Dad, why do, we, why, why do we as Africans speak so aggressively? My dad said, you go back and you tell them. Where we come from, we learned how to speak English in capital letters. You go and tell them. It's my father. That's my Google. So my dad said, we need to talk. Do you know why I brought you to London? I said, I don't know. You dragged me. You didn't bring me. You dragged me to London. He said, I brought you here so you can be better for Congo. So the only way you can be better for Congo, doctor, lawyer, and accountant. I said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hear you, Eddie. Doctor, lawyer, and I finished uni. I told my dad, listen, first of all, my GCSEs were wonderful. My A-level was godly. My dad said, okay, you know, we can expand it a little. You can be scientist. <laughs> Maybe you can go into IT. You know, the longer they spent it, they realize there's cash hidden in other places, right? So I went to uni. I finished. I graduated. I will never forget. A few things happened. My mom was so happy. Africans, maybe you can relate. My mom was so happy. She said, Eddie, you know how proud I am of you. So even if you committed crime, <laughs> the whole of London has seen you on CCTV. <laughs> me, I'll stand in front of the judge. When they ask me to defend you, I say, Your Honor, I know he's a criminal. <laughs> I know he's a murderer. But Your Honor, look at his degree. Come on. <laughs> Mom was happy. Dad said, okay, wonderful. What's next? I said, Dad, people really like me at uni. They like my show. I said, show? 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 What kind of, why are you showing them? <laughs> what are you showing them? I said, no, they really like my show. You know, Dad, like, and then my sister was there. You know, that's, that's my cold D. She's like, Dad, he's really funny. She cut shading. You know, like, proper agent, right? He's really funny, Dad. I've seen him at my uni. He's amazing. My dad said, shut up, you're a child. Get out there. <laughs> my dad realized I was doing low-key stand-up gigs. He didn't speak to me for four months. Somehow, you women are so powerful. Mom somehow convinced my dad. I don't know what she neglected or added. One word, the other. <laughs> One word, the other. Dad turned up enthusiastic. Okay, we're going to a show. Yo, my dad sat there, right? Show just like this. Imagine I'm on stage. My father's come to see me for the first time. He's sat in the middle. I can see him. That's the most important person in that building right now. I'm giving, you know them, them, them kind of laughter where people are like, you can see me. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. My dad was doing this throughout the whole show. 45 minutes set, guys. This guy was nodding for 40 just... I said, what's wrong with this guy? I thought, you know, I'm going to lick him with my favorite joke. I licked it. Everybody's gone crazy. My dad is too. <laughs> so the show finished. Yeah? Standing ovation. I walked over. My dad was still sat down. I came over and said, Daddy, you okay? So he said, oh, what a wonderful experience. <laughs> I said, a wonderful experience is when you laugh, my guy. It's a comedy show. It's a comedy show, you demon. I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> This guy said, oh, I enjoyed it. I said, Dad, you didn't laugh. He goes, I laughed. Ah! Especially that last joke. I said, Dad, you heard the joke? He said, yes, I heard. But I was too busy counting the money. 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. <laughs> wow, Eddie, that's a lot of cash. When is our next show? 
So how are we going to do this? Um, he's been my number one fan since. I've just seen them flash the lights. So I can't stay any longer. So, hey. Brother, this is not Nollywood. You need to relax. <laughs> ah, cool, eh? Chill. <laughs> but I'm going to leave you with this. Always be prepared to teach someone something new. Whatever you have in you is for you to teach someone else. Whether it's your culture, your skill set, whatever, right? But like my thing is, I'm always trying to teach people my culture. Like, even if I teach someone a new word every day. I'm from Congo, we speak a language called Lingala. For me, it's the most beautiful language in the world. So, you know, when someone asks me to teach them something, I always teach them like Mbote, which means hello. So I want everyone to say Mbote after three. One, two, three. Right. So some of my Nigerian friends, you know, they teach me that language. Something. If you're Nigerian, teach some people. Just go, yeah, Bawoni. Yeah? If you're Ghanaian, you might speak, uh, you know, you might speak, uh, what's the language? Three? Yeah? You might say, it is saying, yeah? If you're, if you're French, you, you might say, bonsoir, bonjour. Yeah? If you're Spanish, you might say, hola. If you're uh, Japanese, konnichiwa. If you're Somalian, it's the same thing. The same. What? What? Smait, Smait, what did I say? Junior, what did I say? What, what, are they shopping? What did I say? What did I say? I'm teaching you about culture. Shut up, all of you. I'm teaching you about culture. You're laughing. This is why they don't be invited to Zone 1 to do shows. You get my drift. You get my drift. So here's a quick story. Here's a quick story. I was 13 years old. By this time, I've been in the UK, let's say five years. I made good friends. My best friend Billy was there. My best friend Leroy, he was from the Caribbean. And my best friend Tunde, he was Nigeria. Leroy and Billy came one day and they said to me, Ed, I don't think it's safe for us to go to Tunde's house anymore. I said, why? I said, have you seen the mom? I think the mom is scared. I think the dad is abusive because the mom doesn't even speak English. She makes some crazy sound effects and the dad's the one always doing the talking. I said, what do you mean? I don't understand. Let's ask Tunde. Because it's his family after all. So we went to Tunde. He said, Tunde, is everything all right at home? He said, why? <laughs> Be careful how you question a Nigerian. <laughs> a Nigerian will give you direct answers. He said, why? He said, no, no, we're just trying to find out. Because then, of course, Billy being a loud mom. Listen, mate, let's get straight to the point, all right? Is everything all right at home? Does your dad beat your mom? Your mom doesn't talk much. She makes all these uh, uh, sound effects. What's... Tunde was so angry, he started showing anger in installments. Do you know when someone stuttering? Who told you that? Your family better than mine, you bastard. So we, I was like, calm down, listen. To this. And then this is where Tunde said, everybody needs to shut up. If you don't understand, people's culture. They, they don't come. Out. We didn't even know he had a strong accent like that. He was so angry. He said, African ladies do not need to say anything. But you will feel their presence. And if they have to speak, they only have two sound effects. Ah, ah, and eh, uh -huh. Are you listening? People at the top, are you listening? The people at the top, let me hear say, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's ah, ah, and eh, uh -huh. We was confused. We start taking notes. I'm like, I'm not African enough. He said, ah, ah. Is when you're mad. Ah, ah is when you're confused. Ah, ah is when you're surprised. Ah, ah is when you receive your deportation letter. Ah, ah. <laughs> ah, ah is when Afro Nation tickets sell out. <laughs> ah, ah is when you find out you've crossed the U.S. congestion charge line. <laughs> eh, eh is when you're satisfied. Eh, eh is when you're happy. Eh, eh is when you receive your British passport. <laughs> eh, eh is when you hear that your ex is suffering. Okay. <laughs> That was a personal, you know, that was a, it's therapy for me. You, you know how it is, babe, you know how it is. So we were confused. So one day, one day we went to Tunde's house and I witnessed everything. And I will hold this day dear to my heart forever and ever. Amen. I walked in and I saw Tunde's dad walking just after us. Tunde's mom was ready there. Guys, I'm going to need your help with this one. I'm going to split this place into two. This side, you are my hair side. Side. You're my eh uh -huh side. So let me hear you say eh uh -huh. One, two, three. Uh -huh. 
Good. This side, you are my ah ah side. So after three, I want to hear ah ah. One, two, three. So this side. Right. So this was a conversation. When I point the mic to your side, this is, you know what sound to make. So Tunde's dad kicked the door in. You are Tunde's mom. Kick the door. Bah! He said, Dali, I have some bad news. You know, I've been working at this company for years. I'm their best employee. I've been getting employee of the month every year. But can you imagine they sacked me to not even a paycheck. Maybe they said I'm the worst employee they've ever had. So I punched him. The police came over. I punched the police. Yeah. You know me, baby. Yeah. I'm a gangster. Yeah. But now you have to get a job. You are such a lazy woman. Yeah. This is why I didn't want to marry you. Yeah. Baby, I'm joking. Yeah. Let's go to Balende Suya. Yeah. Let's get some jollof rice. Yeah. Then we can visit Congo. Yeah. You people take the piss. What do you mean? Uh-uh. <laughs> My name is Eddie Caddy. Thank you for listening to me. In Daba X is here to stay. Jesus is good. God bless Congo. Amen. <laughs>